right, folks, Surface Pro 4. Really excited about this. Honestly, I haven't bought a Surface since the original Surface Pro, uh, which came out in 2013. Um, actually, you know, I'm going to end up doing a comparison uh, with that product as well, you know. So anyway, here's the Surface Pro 4 type cover. A lot of improvements made to that with the, um, you know, the keyboard there at the bottom. Nice packaging. Microsoft, is, you know, like I said, premium now. Uh, with the Surface lineup, you know, first time they've done their own PCs and tablets and so forth. This one is the uh, i5, i Core i5 processor, 16 gig RAM, 256 SSD. So I'm gonna curious to see how that performs. Um, like I said, packaging is honestly very similar to what they came out with with Windows 8 um, about three years ago. So let's see what they got now. A lot of improvements have been made over that time span. So. Same, very nice packaging, very similar to the Surface Book packaging. Classic blue Microsoft. Uh, looks very similar. I don't, it actually looks like the same exact adapter that comes with the Surface Book. So that's that. Very minimalistic uh, packaging and design, which I like. Surface Pro 4 stuff, and then you got the same pen. Take that out. And let's just jump right on into it. So this thing is awesome. I can tell you right now, just by holding this thing, it's a very well-built device. Um, a little bit bigger than the, uh, the screen size in the Surface Pro 3. So you do have a built-in USB. You have the display port. You also have the uh, Microsoft Connect adapter, um, you know, to charge it. And then on the other side, you have your headphone jack. And then underneath, I believe, yeah, you'll have your, your micro SD card. So that's pretty much that. Go ahead and power this up. Very thin, lightweight design, um, you know, as they always done with the Surface. Uh, this one's a little bit, I think it's like 12.3 inches or something like that. I have to double check the specs on that. Um, let me see if it's on the back of the box, actually. I know that it's a little bit bigger now because of the way they made the bezel. So, doesn't say, but I'll, I'll look that up. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that um, as far as the service. Let's look at the, the type cover. Now, this is what I'm excited about because truthfully, that's always been one of the, the more terrible things about the surface has been the typing experience. Um, the type cover I always felt was the best. They don't even make that touch cover anymore. But um, nice blue color. And what separates this, you know, from other devices out there is really this type cover. So they've kind of refined it. They've gotten really good at it. They added last year magnets. So when you put it up like top there, it, it holds in pretty well. So you can uh, type on it. Look at the, the keys are separated now. A lot better. Um, nice felt material here at the bottom. Also, it, it's a backlit. Uh, keypad as well so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set up and we'll be back with some full impression hey folks Mark Johnson Tech Snobs full review Surface Pro 4 now this is Microsoft's uh, latest Surface uh, that's come out this year first off I'm gonna jump right into the hardware once again this is high level review I'm not gonna go into a lot of specs and benchmarks and all that crazy stuff I'm just going to tell you how I've been using it and what I thought about it personally. Number one, uh, the design is spectacular. I really love how thin this thing is. It's, it's well made all around. This is a, um, uh, I got 16 gig of RAM in it. I know I said I wouldn't do specs, but I will mention that. I did add 16 gig of RAM just because I could. You know, you got your uh, charging port there, USB display port, and then you also have your uh, micro USB excuse me, micro uh, SD card slot there. So nonetheless, I love this tablet in a sense. I love the feel of it. I kind of, they've done so much better. I mean, I, I got the original Surface Pro. This is the one Microsoft came out with in 2013, February. And it's just drastically different. Much bigger, much more useful than this Gen 1 product. And that's just in about two and a half, two years, maybe 20 months, uh, something like that, a little more than, I say 30 months, I guess closer. But nonetheless, nice product. I've been using it. I like the hardware. This is where the problem comes in. The first day I got it, 
I did Windows updates and I had to re-image the whole thing. Um, and that's just the reality of it. I had to re-image the whole thing. So even though, it, you know, I love the hardware, there's something with Windows 10 and I haven't had this problem on any other Windows 10 machine outside of this one and the Surface Book. Yes, there's been firmware updates. It's made certain things better. I used to scroll and got weird color issues. But, I mean, it, it's a nice tablet. I mean, it does all this cool stuff, um, you know, from a sense of it's a Windows laptop too. And it's just weird because it's like, it's not really the best tablet in the sense because it really doesn't have a whole lot of tablet apps. I mean, if you go into the, the Microsoft Store and you can find, you know, a good amount of things, but it's not like, it doesn't compare to something like an iPad or Android tablet. I mean, those have a lot more tablet-based apps. Um, so it, it's just weird because even using it like this, it, it, it feels a little more, um, it, it really doesn't come to life until you use this type cover. And this type cover is really much better. Glass trackpad. I mean, I'm going to matter of fact, I'm going to just show you how much progress they've made. So if you look at the size of the trackpad on the original Surface, and then you look at it on this Surface Pro, I mean, it's night and day. It's crazy. So it's much better. Um, using it on your lap, it's it's okay. I mean, you can bend it back, so it's, it's a lot better. It still has the magnets on here. So it, it's great. I mean, all this stuff is cool. It's just, for some reason, these software bugs is annoying. Sometimes I put the keyboard on, the mouse stops working, I get weird flickers on the screen, I get an NVIDIA driver crashes, and all this Intel, whatever, video, display. It's just weird stuff that I just don't expect to happen on a machine that's 1500 bucks plus another 129 for the keyboard. It's just, I don't know, it's just disappointing in that aspect. There's no LTE model, um, which some people are looking for. I, I would have been interested in that. So it it's a great, I mean, if you like hybrid devices, I mean, this is the one to get. Um, it's just be prepared. You may have some weird software bugs. And it's kind of like, I don't know, you know, I'm just at a point now in my life where I just, I used to love that stuff. Like the tech snob in me is saying, hey, this has got more features than an iPad. You do all this cool stuff. It's a real laptop, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, I don't even care because when I get display driver crashes or my mouse stops working or Bluetooth is off and the pen features don't work, it's just weird, you know, it's just, um, it, it's painful and I just don't really know if I feel like dealing with all that. But nonetheless, when it works, it works great. Um, and who knows, in two weeks, there could be all these fixes and everything's back to normal again. So that's my honest review of it. Um, I definitely say, I give it a thumbs up to buy slash wait. If you really like tablet slash, you know, hybrid laptops, this is the best one, so there's no question about it. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the site, techsnob.com slash blog. Take care.